question. My name is Modesta Lin. I am your moderator for the session today. Um, today we are looking at the Unlocking Africa's Potential, Building an Ideal Workforce for the um, Africa Continental Free Trade Area Success. And um, this is part of the Liberty Sparks webinar series that highlights on the different sectors and different conversations, discussions surrounding the Africa, free, Africa Continental Free Trade Area. And um, this is specifically this session is going to highlight on the aspect of workforce. And this is stemming from how the AFTA is set to increase economic growth and development um, and specifically enhancing human development through strengthening inter-African trading. And there has been a bit of concerns here and there, especially when it comes to workforce. Um, as we know, Africa has the largest workforce and most of them consisting of the young people who populate a majority of Africa's um, workforce. So now we, through this session, we're going to be able to highlight um, how we're able to actually build uh, the workforce and addressing some key concerns specifically on how we can build an ideal workforce through the after. So we have our lovely speaker today who uh, I'll give a chance to introduce himself. Um, Mr. Evans, I don't know if you can hear us. Absolutely. Oh, perfect. I don't know if you're able to um, have your video on so that we can be able to see you, put a face. Oh, oh sure. Name, probably. Perfect. Ah, welcome, Karibu Sana. So maybe you can take the past few minutes just to introduce yourself, tell us uh, a bit of what you do um, as we start off. Karibu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Modesta. Uh, my name is Evans Edebo. I am um, a financial business development and uh, uh, trade um, support expert. And I also happens to be an AFCFTA media fellow. Uh, we're primarily engaged in uh, promoting the opportunity um, and the impact of the African free trade uh, area. And uh, so far we've been able to impact more than 20,000 um, uh, SMEs, okay, in terms of um, true um, digital community building, uh, true advocacy and engagement, and then capacity building and all of that. So thank you very much. Good to have me. Uh, thank you for having me in the call today. And thank you for joining us. Uh, I think it's very humbling to have someone who's actually a media fellow for the after and I think this will be a very insightful discussion um, that we'll be able to have tonight. So just to be able to give an overview, today we're going to be tackling the aspects of identifying the workforce needs, the education and training as um, Evans has been able to mention, I mean, he's and I think we're going to explore that further during the conversation. He's talked about aspects of advocacy, capacity building, um, so that aspects of education and training and then entrepreneurship and innovation and then collaboration and partnerships. So I think I wanna just jump right into it. Um, and this is just stemming from our concern. I think I wanna make this uh, interesting to start with. Uh, the after is opening up Africa to the rest of Africans, something that sadly has it's taken a long time to be to be affected but i just primarily the concern has been um since africa itself has a large um workforce are we looking at a situation whereby we'll be having issues surrounding job creation and economic growth when it comes to now the regional integration that after might bring so just from your perspective uh is this a concern we should have in terms of building an ideal workforce are we going to issue of too much, uh, too much, too many people in the workforce and too little within the industries, just from your perspective. Absolutely, it is a major concern, it's something we have to look into. Uh, the reason being that if you look at uh, the AFCFT and the way it is designed, okay, as a policy, okay, is a legal instrument, okay, is a policy that created a free trade area. But uh, then countries will have to um, will have to become a signatory. So when you become a signatory, so you now have the responsibility, uh, you own it, and also to implement it, to localize it. So you have to come up with strategies, talking about national strategies, national implementation strategies, okay, that will help 
um, the AFCFTA to benefit the people. So as it is, AF AFCFTA will not benefit the people until it is implemented. And for AFCFTA to be implemented, uh, there has to be participation and uh, inclusion. So that's where the issue of building um, an ideal workforce and effective workforce comes into play for the effective implementation of the FCFTA. So it actually goes round, so everybody can benefit from it. So it's a major concern. It's something we should look into. Uh, thank you. And I think this is something that, um, as you've highlighted, it, it might take some time. And I think there's a call for patience a lot of the times, especially for um, the job creation bit. So I just want to hear from you, since you've worked with SMAs especially, um, how can the AFTA contribute to job creation and, and economic growth and you know, regional integration? Um, and if you have specific success stories when it comes to building the ideal workforce for this, since I know some countries have already, um, are already signatories to the AFTA and some of them have signed some implementation. So maybe from your perspective, especially in the media world, what are the success stories on how the AFTA has contributed to job creation and building ideal workforce for this? All right. Uh, thank you very much. I think before um, I sorry, I, sorry, Evans. Maybe maybe you can have your video. And we'd really love to see you while you speak. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just a little bit concerned about the network. Uh, you know, when the video is on, okay, uh, it's it takes a lot of um. Uh, Understandable. That's okay. That's okay. okay. But let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Just before I, I, I talk more, I actually go into the question straight. I want to give you a very practical scenario. Like in Nigeria, for instance, you see the SMEs in Nigeria. There are over 41 million SMEs in Nigeria. These are the ones that have been captured in the database. These are the ones that have been registered. Okay. There are a lot of SMEs that are not there that are in the informal sector. So they are not included in this number. So in this context, let's say over 41 million SMEs. And out of these SMEs, okay, these SMEs, they are creating over 87% of the job you have. You know, Nigeria is one of the largest economy in Africa. Now they're contributing over 87%. And in terms of GDP, they're contributing like um, 49%, right? Then in terms of export, they are just about less than 7% of the total gross export. Why? Because before now, it is um, it's pretty difficult to navigate the African market because before now, the African market uh, was actually uh, fragmented, okay? Because uh, there was absence of a framework that should regulate, that should govern trade practices in the continent. But what AFCFA has come to do is to create a market at the same time to regulate the market, how such markets should function, what should govern the market. So as a tool. So now let me quickly mention that you don't expand, you're, you're not contributing so much to the economy in terms of GDP, you're not creating jobs. When you are importing, you're not creating jobs. You are only going to be able to create jobs, you're going to be able to expand uh, as a company, you're going to be able to grow and scale when you are exporting. This is because you are going to have to increase your production capacity, your manufacturing, you're going to have to a lot of responsibility by way of how to, how to, going to create a lot of jobs and then get um, uh, people okay to do the work and that's exactly what AFCFTA has come to do for us okay we're actually looking at a huge market of over 1.4 billion African consumers with uh with a uh, valued at 3.4 trillion USD okay now already um SMEs uh, they comprise over more than 60 percent okay in africa so it is going to create a lot of jobs if you see their contribution already they are creating up to 80 percent of the total jobs you have in africa okay and so the moment uh afcft at full implementation talking about the various at the national level 
each country will have to take responsibility. Once you are a signatory, you have ratified, you have to take a responsibility to implement the AFCFTA. And once that is done, it's going to give them access, it's going to improve their access to, um, to the market. It's going to improve their access to finance. It's going to improve their access to technologies. So it's going to improve their access to capacity building. It's going to improve their access to trade uh, market intelligence. It's actually going to, they are going to be in a better position to be able to assess opportunities. There are a lot of interventions. A lot of intervention in terms of resources, in terms of provision of resources, funding, and, and all of that. So through AFCFT, it's going to empower them, it's going to enhance their ability to assess these resources, to assess these tools, and then they are going to be able to do more to contribute. They are going to, they are going to be able to export, they're going to increase their production, they're going to be able to scale into new market opportunities and frontiers across the free trade area. Uh, thank you so much. And I think uh, I really love how you also add um, figures and stats just to be able to give, paint a picture into just how impactful the FTA might actually be for Africa. And the fact that um, it's really sad to see that despite the fact that SMEs contribute 87% of the workforce, we are only exporting 7%. And um, just to be able to um, tap onto that. Uh, I think you've highlighted on aspects of um, scaling up, especially uh, with this framework. Mm -hmm. Just to find out from you, um, what kind of skills and competencies will we need to be able to make this effective? Because you're talking about scaling up and you're talking about market intelligence and all this are, you know, uh, something that we need also as traders, business people, sector developers to be able to know as a cheat code, what kind of skills and competencies would we need to be able to make this effective? Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, let me quickly add to, let me quickly add this. Let me quickly mention this. Uh, I think so far there's been a couple of disruption in terms of the corporate world. Uh, one of them happened to be, um, okay, let me say technology. Okay, uh, there's been a disruption. Technology has been a major disruption. Then also then following COVID-19. And then I will add that AFCFC happens to be uh, one of the major disruption, okay, in Africa, especially in this part of the world in Africa. Why? It required businesses to adapt. It doesn't matter whether you are indigenous African business. It doesn't matter whether you are, uh, you are a non-resident entity or you're registered as the Africa. Everybody would have to re-adapt to AFCFT. And that is what we've been doing for the past three years. Okay, trying to help businesses to adapt at scale, giving them the ability to, to convert the opportunity to concrete transactions. So if you don't adapt, you're not going to be competitive. If you're not going to be competitive, it means you can't scale. You can, you can, your product will not circulate in this free trade area. If the product is not circulating in free trade area, so you don't have market. Okay, and if, 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 if the market is not there, then you're not selling. And any business that is not selling is dying. It doesn't matter. Any business that is not selling, every single day you're not selling, that business gradually is a matter of time into that. So one of the skills that is required for businesses, for businesses is resilience. They need to adapt, that they need to become resilient. Okay. Then another um, skill is, okay, let me come from this perspective. Let me come from this angle for us to better understand. Now, there is what is called national implementation strategy and plan. Once uh, a particular country becomes a signatory and it's, you ratify its agreement, then what you do is to, um, is to find a way to, to, to adapt AFCFCA in, to integrate it to become a national law. So as a policy, so you now have to create what's called national implementation strategy and plan. This is the blueprint. It's a blueprint how the FCFT is going to be implemented nationwide in that particular state party, right? Now, that's on one hand. Then on the other hand, at the continental level, there are operational tools. There are operational instruments that 
that businesses or that uh, uh, that workforce, we have to uh, become proficient. For instance, let me take a very good example. Let's say digital trade. Digital trade. Now, okay, there are two platforms basically that are driving digital trade. Okay, supported by AFCFT, the African Union, and the African Bank, and UNDP, and all of that. Number one, you have the um, uh, you have the uh, African Electronic uh, uh, Trade Group, okay, A Trade, that is headquartered in Kigali. Then you have this other uh, uh, African uh, Exchange, African Trade Exchange, ATES, right? So any uh, business or anybody that want to but want to be able to convert the FCFT to concrete transaction, you have to be proficient in this area in terms of digital trade. So you need digital trade skills in other as one of the skills that is required. And also I've also mentioned residents. Uh, then I've, one of the ways to become resilient is to adapt to AFCFTA. If you're going to trade, in fact, I've often jokingly, I've told SMEs, uh, most of my, during my training, I said, listen, is it that you adapt or you travel out? You can go to US, you can go to, <laughs> you can go to Asia, you can go to Europe, you can go to anywhere. If you don't want to adapt, as long as you want to be part of AFCFT, you want to be in Africa, you want to be part of uh, uh, inter-African trade, you want to gain market share, uh, you want to scale, you want to exploit new market frontiers, you, are, you have no option than to adapt. If it's over here, they say, is it that you change or that business will go down? So we'll have to, have to, in order to remain resilient, they also have to be competitive, right? They also have to be competitive. There are tools, there are applications, okay? Um, implement uh, AFCFA uh, operational tools that they'll have to acquaint themselves with in order to be relevant, in order to be able to scale and assess opportunities in new market across the free trade area. And also let me quickly mention, there are over 5,000 516 5, products, tariff lines, products that can be exported under the FCFT. So they need to understand this product. Like for instance, um, recently uh, the ministers, all the um, trade ministers in Africa, has, they, they've agreed to ban secondhand clothes in Africa, secondhand. So you can imagine a business person that is intending to go into secondhand business. And such a person is not aware that the secondhand um, line of business is closed is banned already. So this is why SMEs too, we have to understand these products that can be spoke that just within the general list alone, under the general list alone. And then we have the key priority areas, you have the service, area key priority sectors and all that. So these are areas that we'll have to adapt to and understand the skills that are required to be competitive in, within the free trade area. Thank you so much. And I think that's a, a very insightful cheat codes. You know, the fact that we have to build resilience, be competitive and also adapt while also um, investing in digital proficiency when it comes to trading and, and um, competency. And I think this is very integral, but now just to be able to kind of like add on to that, just to be able to find out from you, um, we need to, because there's a new workforce constantly coming in from the universities, from all these vocational training institutes. I just wanna find out since you've worked with SMEs, you've worked in the areas of capacity building and advocacy, what strategies and initiatives can we be able to implement just to be able to enhance education, vocational training, professional development that actually can meet this resilient and um, you know accessible and proficient and adaptive workforce for the after? So what kind of, um, what do you envision especially for education sector for professional development, even if it's personal, that we can, what strategies and initiative can we implement um, within our different countries just to be able to meet these skills and competencies? Thank you very much. Uh, can I just make a remark here? I think this 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 conversation has actually been one of the most interesting conversation. I don't know. I probably I just realized. <laughs> 
yesterday or the day before yesterday because I've never had a conversation like this where the points were carefully articulated. Okay, so that makes this uh, conversation very interesting and unique. And so that's why I was so proud to promote um, this. Oh my goodness. Oh my, now you just asked a very, uh, do I say sensitive, a very crucial question. A very crucial question. And I'm forced to say it and I have to say it. I'm going to say it. What I want to share with you is a $1 million strategy. It is a personal strategy. Okay, do I say it's an intellectual property for you to understand? Okay, over the week, I just created a, pro a proposal. Uh, it's one of the largest um, agency in Nigeria, one of the largest. In fact, the agency that is in charge of SMEs in Nigeria. I created a proposal for them, okay, to help mainstream, to help um, to drive participation and inclusion in the FCLT implementation strategies, okay, regarding SMEs in Nigeria and all of that. Okay, I want to share with you an intellectual property. It's a $1 million, okay. But you mentioned something that even though it's personal, so I want to share a personal strategy that I have particularly be, uh, that I've engaged, which has been working. Okay. Um, um, uh, there are about the five um, action points in this strategy. Five action. These are strategies I am currently engaging and doing. Five action points. The very first one is what is called advocacy through digital community building and engagement. Advocacy through digital community building and engagement. This is one of the reasons why we have the largest AFCFT African Youth Engagement in Africa. I started that community over three years ago, and today that community has become the largest um, uh, AFCFT um, um, youth related community. And I'm going to give you the same formula, the same strategy, the same template. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. Now, during my training, during my training, when I got the African Union Scholarship to learn about AFCFTA, okay, and all of that, and all of that. So I found that AFCFT is a huge opportunity and the African uh, population is going to be one of the youngest in the world. Youths are, are increasing and the jobs are on there and everything. I was shocked that we have an opportunity like this, right? Why are we not talking about it? But I realized that I later realized the truth is whoever that pays the Pipe determines the tune. We all know what the mainstream media want to talk about. Okay, is what we'll pay them. So about, I knew that there's a problem, and then I have to take responsibility. I knew that it's not going to be easy, but I had to start somewhere. I had no money to go to television, to go to radio, to go to you know the mainstream to start running publications or national dailies and all of this. I leverage on social media platform. I started by creating a community. Because we need to bring these people together. We need to find, we need to start by creating awareness, right? We need to start by letting them know about this. But you need to be able to bring them together. We're looking at uh, how many African, 54 African countries, particularly talking about the free trade area, the party state, those who have um, uh, ratified. Then it was about 34, they're about, okay, now it's 46. So I needed to start somewhere. So that was one of the strategy. So it's something you can adopt, okay, to bring um, all your targeted, um, okay, all the prospects together into one place. One, that's what. So after that, then we realize that we need to move to the next step. And then the next step, capacity building and development. So from there, we started rolling out trainings. We started creating curriculum, we started creating different trainings regarding the key priority areas on how, where to come, how to combat the opportunity to concrete transactions. Now, there are three, let me quickly mention two things here. First, I want you to note here on the capacity building and development, there are three ways to learn AFCFT. There are three ways to approach it. Number one, is to approach it from educational perspective. 
right. At the end of the day, AFCFT is a policy that regulates intra-African trade, is a policy, okay, is a legal instrument that regulates intra-African trade. Trade is a discipline, is a field of study, is an aspect of international economy, right? International economy, there are two subsectors. You have trade, you have finance. So trade is a discipline. AFCFT is a policy, right? So one way to learn about it in terms of educational training is to deliver it, to do the design, implementation of the training module from educational perspective. Now, that is not what we do because we're not training anybody to go write any exam. We are not training anybody to go sit for any exam, to pass any exam. No. You want to be proficient in AFCFT. At the end of the day, with evidence, based on, you are able to convert it to concrete transactions. Right. That's our goal. Now, away from education now, okay, those that need it for research, for TSCs, and all of that, good. We are not a training, we are not an um, educational institution, and all of that, good. Number two, Funny enough, there's no university that is running AFCFT as the training. Why? Because it's not a feed per se, it's a policy. It's a policy. Now, another second area of running this training is from legal perspective, from legal point of view. Okay, so for those that have been needing it for uh, integration, uh, those that have been leading it in the law court, at the end of the day, is a legal instrument. It's all about law. It's, you understand, it's about 77 pages of CFTA. Okay, itself, the document. If they were to hand over that document to you, you can't make anything out of it if you're not a lawyer or whatever. It's just for reading sake like theory, but it's more than that. Okay, so we don't really, that's not our uh, aspect. Our aspect, our focus, our point, is from entrepreneurship, from business perspective, right? I want to help people to make money from AFCFT. I don't know if there's a trade deal. We're talking about 3.4 trillion USD, a market of 1.4 billion consumers. So the question is, how much of this market share, how much of this money is in your pocket? Are you attractive? And all of that. And also, this is where we're coming from to give them the ability to convert it to concrete transactions. So we care about freelancers. We care about students who will want to have a side hustle. We care about SMEs, formal, informal. We care about businesses. We care about youths, both in trade or those. So we want, our job is to help them to identify key priorities area where they can convert this opportunity to concrete transactions. After all, we're talking about elevating, uh, we're talking about reducing poverty, creating opportunities and all of that. There are two ways to measure the effectiveness, the sources of any AFCFT national implementation strategy. Number one, by the quantum of opportunity, such strategy is able to create for the people. Number two, by the volume of product, okay, by the volume of uh, export is able to generate. That's it. Every other thing is story. It's, an entire, it's, it's something that regulates African trade. So that's our focus, entrepreneurship, AFCFT entrepreneurship, how you can convert it to concrete transaction, how you can monetize it, how you can create something out of it. That's our. So having said that, let me also quickly mention in terms of the delivery, okay, in terms of the delivery, we started with what we call B2C, business to customers. We were dealing directly with SMEs. SMEs with product, product-oriented SMEs. We were dealing with them. So we created a module for them, we created slide for them. We're running training based on key priority areas and based on the key um, uh, sector service and product um, that they can export and all of that. Sooner or later, we realize that we're not gonna be able to do it ourselves. If really we want to democratize this opportunity, right? We're committed to democratize the opportunity and giving them access. Right, so we realized that we're not going to be do it, we can't do it alone. So that's why I created Pan African Business Lab. Okay, as a consortium of professionals, as a consortium, okay, 
of um, trade support and SPAD consultants. So we can do this together. So through that, it's basically train the trainer. So through that, we are able to train others who will not go and train these SMEs. For the SMEs in Ghana, the SMEs in um, everywhere, in South Africa, in Kenya, in Uganda, and all of that. Okay, so we're able to train professionals across these countries. And so this is why we're able to move so fast. So, and to tomorrow we're still running our train the trainer who we in turn go. So that one, we call it B2C, a B2B model, business to uh, business. So this is for consultants, these are trade experts and all of that. So this, how, this is the model I've been able to use on that capacity building. And thereafter, the third uh, point under this strategy is support providing them support. Training is different from support. I have taught you how to do it. You have to take the responsibility. If you, are not, if you are not able to do it, I'm going to help you, but then I will charge you this time around. <laughs> For instance, I have trained you on how to, on how to create, how to create an export strategy. You want to create export strategy. Okay, I've trained you how to create export strategy, information that you need and all of that. Just like you have a business plan, you have export development plan or export plan. Now you're asking me to come and help you to do it. There's no problem. I'll give you six months free support. After that six months, you still need more service. Of course, I'm going to charge. You. So that is where support is different. There are those who say, okay, create a blog and start talking about the FCFCA just like I have blog, for instance. Create a blog and say, I don't know what to write. I can't write. Oh, okay, you want me to be writing for you, to be creating content for you? I can't do that. I will create six months free for you, uh, three per week. And after that six months per content, I charge you $5. The support, that's three on the strategy. Then four, you move on to digital trade digital trade there are those for now they are not able to shoot a physical trade per se and all of that so you onboard them you get them enlisted on digital trade platform okay so they can get started why number five is what is called trade delegation trade delegation this is where smes that have product confirm product whose product align with AFCFTA strategy, with AFCFTA standard and all of that. Okay, so you're ready. Okay, we cannot have a trade delegation. So we cannot have, uh, bring them in into the um, um, uh, MOU that we have signed, bring them in into global opportunities, exhibition, trade fair to promote their product. This involves physical movement. Like for instance, we're having about three to four. We have one in Singapore by August. We have uh, one in uh, um, Los Angeles, uh, United States, September. Then we have in Nairobi for Africa too by September. And uh, by November, we have uh, one in UK, London. So you can't just bring ordinary SMEs into these who don't have a solid product, who don't have a solid base, who are not serious about doing business, either within or outside Africa. So these are the five strategy advocacy through digital community building and um, engagement. Number two is capacity building and development. Number three is um, support. Number four is our uh, digital trade on board them into AFC marketplace. And number five is trade delegation or what you call exhibition, trade promotion, international trade promotion opportunities. I was I was busy taking notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think this this is this is a very good way of just um highlighting what we need to do in terms of strategies and um plans just so we can be able to um, really be um, work on how the after can be able to actually build ideally within our countries. And uh, I think actually when the aspects of advocacy comes in and the fact that you've leveraged on social media is something that I think most of us have not been able to really be able to factor as much. I think um, we've always focused on um, just generic um, industries, generic sectors, 
and we've forgotten just how much social media can actually be able to help in the implementation of after and i think i really like that you've been able to highlight this and the kind of community we are working with when it comes to the new workforce is more social media oriented so i think these very good avenues especially with the capacity building and development and how you've been able to highlight the different approaches that different people can be able to tap into you know the educational legal entrepreneurship um, and just being able to see how we're able to also tap into digital trade and support as well and i just i want just as we because we are trying to wrap up as well just so we don't go over time now that we have all these action points and now that we have um strategies and the framework is really good and you've mentioned it's 71 pages not everyone is going to be able to read this um when we come to talk about the workforce now specifically young people we're talking about um entrepreneurs smes how we what are the key challenges and opportunities that you've been able to see in your work that can be able to promote or can hinder diversity inclusion and equal opportunities within the workforce for the success of the africa continental free trade area and this is specifically looking at a few issues that have been coming up you know we're talking about xenophobia in some african countries we're talking about competition unhealthy competition being specific we're talking about um this conversation that have been arising where countries are trying to see if they can be able to be limited to uh, being focused on one specific sector one specific um, trade tool or trade goods so what kind of a challenges and opportunities are you envisioning or have you been able to see um, in specifically promoting diversity, inclusion and equal opportunities within the workforce for the success of AFTA? Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. I think this is a very interesting conversation, probably because the point has carefully be articulated actually uh, yes, you mentioned a, a number of very important points. Uh, I just want to uh, make a note of um, a few of them before I move on. Uh, the first thing is to identify um, uh, your market, your target market, your target. So if you're building a workforce, for instance, what market, what product, what sector am I building a workforce for? Now, we're talking about verticals and value chains. We have product, we have sector, we have market. These are some of the verticals. Then we're talking about value chain. Okay, a product. So let's pick a particular product, for instance. Let's take coffee or let's take one of the agro product, for instance. Okay, the resourcing, you have to source the product first. So it's either you are the one cultivating it, is it that you have a farm where you're growing it, or you go meet smallholder farmers who are cultivating it. So there is sourcing. So you source for the product. That's number one in the value chain. That's number one you source. Then number two, there is processing. You process it. It undergoes value addition. Right? Is it that you're doing it in your within your company, or you're doing it uh, within your uh, region, area, local, or is it even possible you're doing it outside the country to another neighboring country? Yeah. So there's it's the thirty percent. You move it. Okay, addition sixty uh, percent to add another thirty. Another person finishes up and all of that. So there is um, processing. Then there is distribution. You distribute. Now that distribution again, okay, is either you are you are if you're looking at the uh, the the marketing process, the value chain, is it that you're the one selling directly? Now you have uh, wholesalers, you have retailers, okay, then you have the end users, you have the customers. So is it that you're the one manufacturer from your factory? You are the one directly selling to the end users, customers or you have authorized distributors and all of that. So is it that they are within your country and all of that, or they are outside your country? Okay, in other African country, or okay. So these are the value chain, one. Then we'll talk about the vertical, the product itself, that we'll talk about the particular sector and all of this. In my own experience, from my own experience, 
after my training, even while I was still undergoing training, when I saw the huge opportunity and potential. I believe the FCFCA is a business opportunity, a huge one at that, and also a tool for social impact. It's both a tool and a business. You want to do it as a business? Good. Full time. You want to do it as a nonprofit uh, leader? There's no problem. You can do everything for free. You can do everything for Africa and all of that. So it serves as a tool. And okay, from my experience, I found out that the most marginalized community in the implementation value chain are women, youth, and SMEs. Okay, let me just give you a bit of idea of. Uh, I actually had a slide for this, okay, though uh, we are not using slide. I actually had a slide for this. Yes, I, I prepared a, sl a slide for this. Oh, now, let share. me... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if I can... Let me see if I can quickly uh, share my screen. Uh, okay, it's disabled. Let's just go on so it doesn't delay. I actually had a scratch this slide. For Let's just go on so it doesn't delay. Okay, just, it doesn't delay, okay, the conversation. Time is already fast spent. So from my own experience, okay, looking at the implementation value chain, implementation value chain, okay, you have the agreement itself. Okay, you have the FCFC agreement, which was negotiated by Africa for Africa. Okay, under the EU, Africa came together to negotiate this agreement. You want to be part of the agreement? Then from there, you become a signatory to the agreement. So it's not at the national level, signatory to the agreement. Now you create a strategy for it, national implementation strategy. Then you cannot bring in all the stakeholders. And who are these stakeholders? Both public and private sector. In the end, what is government exporting? Their role is to create the enabling environment, is to policies for businesses to treat. So at the end of the day, it boils down to the real sector, which is the manufacturing, and also the service industry, the service sector, which is also very huge, right? Then in the real sector, you come to uh, SMEs, right? Comes to SMEs now, and then you come women, those are informal, these are even informal, whose businesses have not been formalized. Formalized, probably they've not registered. They have a lot of uh, permit, licenses, certification. They do not have, you know, and all of that. They are not fully formalized. Okay. At the end of the day, the AFCFTA is created for these people, and yet they are the most marginalized. They don't have the necessary tools, the necessary resources, in terms of human capital resources, and all of that in terms of uh, standards, in terms of processes, structures for the business, uh, and all of that. Okay, so sorry, sorry, Evans. Uh, maybe you can share one more time. Maybe share your screen just to confirm. <laughs> I would love to see the PowerPoint, honestly. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can share my screen. Let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Ah, uh, yes. Are, can you see it? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let me let me scroll down. Let me try and scroll down to uh we're looking at um Okay. In terms of, um, okay, we talked about education already. Okay, yes. Okay, let me just, so we're talking about, so you can see that the SMEs, businesses are the core of AFCFTA. Businesses that are the core of AFCFTA. So I decided to focus on women, youth, and SMEs. Now, often, I talked about, I often mention across communities and demographies. Demography has to do with population. So we're looking at the young people in Africa. Basically, we're talking about the youth. 
rad. Then when we when I mentioned communities, I'm talking about different professional communities. You have the accountant, you have the lawyers, you have the content creators, you have um, exporters, you have um, uh, those in the tourism industry. A lot of them, okay. But I am focused on women, youth, and SMEs. Try to bring them into the mainstream, okay. Trying to help them formalize, trying to help them learn about the implementation tools, okay. Operational tools and resources, how to leverage on AFCFCA applications, how to get information, market intelligence, and all of that. So basically, this is what I've been doing. So one of the strategy is you want to play in this, um, you want to become a player, identify a community, identify the market sector. You want to do coffee, right? You want to, uh, you want to, uh, uh, coffee, you want to drive participation and inclusion regarding uh, businesses in the coffee value chain. Beautiful. Right. So if you're looking at lawyers, it's so sad. A lot of lawyers, uh, this is a, a legal tool in the end. It's a legal instrument. But how many lawyers are even aware of this? That's there. Then you're talking about transporters. Recently, they banned um, second hand. These are huge opportunities for fashionpreneurs, fashionpreneurs, fashion and designers. How many of them are aware? How many of them know what is AFCFC? How many of them are aware that there's a huge market of 3.4 trillion USD? How many of them are aware that they can now scale to over 1.4 billion people? How many of them are aware? How many of them are aware that they can now, there's a huge market for made in Africa, all kinds of Africana fabrics? designs and all of that. How many of them are aware? Right. They love, during our training, we give them practical ideas to convert the opportunity to concrete transactions. Uh, one of the ideas we give them is, um, 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 you can do made in Kenya, for instance. Understand what is at stake. We have 1.4 billion uh, uh, con consumers, African consumers. We have a single market. Nigeria wants to dominate that market. South Africa want to rule that market. Uh, Kenya want a 50% market share. Uh, Morocco want a 50%. Uh, Ghana want a 70%. So there is a competition. What you can do is to help your people to know about it, learn about it, and give them the ability, help them to trade, to scale by reforming policies, policies that are counterproductive. It has to be reformed or it has to be erased and create new policies that will help them. Port needs to be automated. People, you know, in terms of shipment, inspection, you have to automate a number of processes. In terms of uh, road network, okay, recently, uh, Afrizim Bank, they built uh, a world-class uh, laboratory for product testing, analysis, and all of that. It's a world-class supported by AFCFT here in Nigeria. People need to be aware of this so that when they send their product, once it is tested, analyzed, they're able to design their, their label, then their branding and everything. And that product can fly anywhere in the world. That's part of the technical barrier to trade. Poor labeling, a product not properly labeled cannot cross national borders, okay? So the first step is to target a particular market that this is. So if we're looking at students, okay, want to bring students who want to create their awareness, you can start writing by current affairs. You don't need any permission from anywhere, anybody to write current affairs about the FCFT, either for undergraduates or final years, all these uh, freelancers and all of that. So if you're focusing on maybe bloggers, for instance, okay, there are a lot of AFCFT information. Information is out there every day, implementation update. And that's what I do in my engagement. If you check my wall, you check my profile, you see it. So that's what I do. I see people are crazy about it. I, as if you are the one that, uh, that, 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 that gave back to the information. No, you just pick the content too. And then you, you know, you know, copyright, like you, you, in a way, where's that sales to convert? And that's it. So you have to target a market. And then you, when you target a market, you now know the kind of workforce that you want to build for that particular market. In my own case, I've been building uh, trade support experts, trade support, 
expert. You want to trade, uh, you want to take part in uh, free trade areas and all of that. These are those that will help to adapt your product, adapt your business. Okay, it's a market that allows for better person, product, good services, and investment. But you have to understand how the market works. If you don't understand how the market works, how can you adapt to the market? How can you maximize the market? How can you combat the opportunity to concrete transactions? You'll be making mistakes and it's costly. This is international trade. It's capital intensive. So we'll be training trade support experts. We'll be training trade um, analysts. We'll be training uh, trade uh, intra-African trade advisors. And these are whatever that we'll be training. And including trainers. These are things students can do. Leveraging on social media. I use WhatsApp a lot. I use Telegram. I use all of this a lot. We will provide training for them, some free, some paid training. So these are what they can do. The bottom line is you have to target. I don't do, uh, do I have a lot of consult, big, whatever, but I am more focused on these SMAs. Focus on bringing the opportunity to their digital doorstep. So that's what I do. So it is to locate a particular product you want to drive. Is it, um, is it sheer butter? Is it um, sesame seed? Is it, um, which of the agri product? Which of the agri product you wanna drive? Then you look at the entire value chain and then you start by capacity build, you start by uh, advocacy. Hey, all the cotton manufacturers, all those in the cotton value chain, we are having a training for you, all those in spice, seasonings, value chain, made in African spice seasoning, uh, whatever, um, uh, conference, summit. These are what people are doing. Some of my people, these are what they're doing. A lot of them have their blogs uh, where they are, uh, you know, content and all of that. And they are getting clients. A lot of them are doing uh, trade fairs, exhibitions, doing summit, even though it's just virtual. Right. So if we're saying we're doing for lawyers, how lawyers can convert these opportunities to concrete transactions. We're doing for accountants, how accountants can convert it to concrete transactions. We're doing for those in the transport uh, value chain, in tourism value chain. We're looking at those in just like, you can, I'm, I'm over 5,000 products. So it's to locate the market that, and then, then that will now guide you on the kind of workforce that you are going to build. You can also have that same strategy, B2B and B2C. As much as you are, you are engaging with them directly, you can also be running train the trainers. Those who also, if you're training, for instance, if you start from Kenya, you start from Uganda, there are a lot of them in Nigeria. How do you reach a lot of them in Nigeria? So you have to run a training that will train people in Nigeria. Through those people, you are not going to be able to reach, okay, your market and whatever in Nigeria. Though it's a free trade area, it's a huge market, we have to create a strategy that will help us to dem uh, democratize this opportunity Okay, and drive it and ensure that the end users or the targeted uh, markets and uh, players, they are able to get value from whatever we're doing. Thank you so much, Evans. And I think this was discussion, this, this bit of the discussion was really um, technical and uh, just giving us a deeper understanding of what we need to do in terms of building the workforce and also leveraging on different avenues in the value chain system, um, aspects of the sectors, value addition, distribution, identifying niche as well. And um, since I see we're running out of time, I just wanna give like a few minutes in case anyone has a question, they can just um, either type it on the chat box or also be able to raise their hand but um, just as we wait for that, maybe Evans, I, since this presentation looks <laughs> amazing, uh, maybe just give you a few minutes um, if you'd like to just uh, like uh, kind of like a closing remark, anything that we've not been able to highlight that you feel that we need to understand as um, stakeholders in this field, you know, in the field of advocacy, training, capacity building, businesses, um, representatives here, SMEs, policy makers, legal officers, so maybe from what you had, um, if maybe there's an aspect that you've not been able to tackle that um, you can be able to tell us about in say two minutes. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, first, let me begin by, you see my conclusion, the I just Africa is talking business, be part of it, right? Then another thing I want to quickly mention is AFCFT is not a reality, whether by faith, by design, AFCFT is not a reality. And people are cashing out of it 
big time. Now, let me also do quickly uh, that AFCFT requires big and private partnership business model. Okay, both public and private, okay, partnership business model. Okay, you are actually helping your country and helping your people to learn about this opportunity. Whether they learn about it or not, AFCFTA will go on. AFCFTA is not waiting for anybody, right? You can imagine Nigeria is exporting to you. You are not able to export to Nigeria. You are just importing. It will still be the same problem we are facing from the West. So that's why you have to as much as possible to help the people to learn about it, your community, at the same time, making money on the side, because there's going to be both paid and unpaid services that you're going to be uh, providing for them. You do not need any special uh, license or special permission or any other thing to do this. It is a policy that you're helping people to learn about it. In fact, they should, they should, they should even be praying for you. Do you know how many people that are praying for me? For doing this, why I'm actually still making money at the same time. Do you know how many people that are praying for me? I can just roll out the training module. I say, this is going to be free. I can roll out a minute. This is a premium training, exclusive. It is for X, Y, Z. Those in the transport, whatever value chain. Do you know, the, uh, do you know the, 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 the load of product that will be shipped? Okay, in terms of tonnage, according to, to United Nations for Africa Economic Community, is in, do you know the tonnage of product, movement of product that would happen in the free trade area? So you don't need, you need to move, learn about it, understand how it works, identify a niche for yourself. If you're a copywriter, you just need to learn about AFCFC and then off you go. The content and everything is already there. If you're a communication expert, there's a recent graduate, recent, I said, don't worry, I'll give you a scholarship. I said, join the training. She's a graduate, she read mass communication. I said, you know what? Learn about AFCFTA, and you are going to be driving AFCFTA. What you can give it a name AFCFTA Corner, AFCFTA Show, AFCFTA Hour, AFCFTA, um, whatever it is made in Nigeria. Use it to create a proposal, send it to the television station where I said, don't even apply for a job, partner with them, create a proposal. So you are going to be running it on their platform. Don't say you want to work for them. No, create a proposal and tell them, hey, can we do this? I want to run this on your platform. Guess what? She's so happy. Right. So there are a lot of the opportunities is, is, is so much, but you need to understand how it works. And then you need a mentor. I've been so blessed because of mentors. I've had more than three mentors. This is why I was able to navigate it. Away from mentors, if I give you the AFCFT agreement as a document, you won't be able to make anything out of it. You won't be able, you, you won't even be able to finish reading it if you're not a lawyer. Why would you just be reading according to clause, article, what, what is, what is, uh, you only, it will make little or no meaning, but you need to understand how to monetize it. You need to understand how it works. You need to understand how to convert the opportunity to concrete transaction. So my final word, number one, learn about it. Learn about AFCFT, especially the key priority areas, the protocols, and then the operational instrument is a must. There are a lot of digital applications. Oh my goodness. You can actually run a training on one digital application, just one of the applications. You have African Trade Observatory. That was one of the training hours. One digital application is a market intelligence application. Just that one alone. One, I'm not talking about rule of origin. I'm not even talking about rule of origin. I'm not talking about the rest. Just want this application. So understand the key priority areas, understand the, um, uh, the operational instrument, and then also understand implementation strategies. How is it being implemented country by country? And this is where I come in as an AFCFT media fellow. We understand what is happening country by country how it is being implemented, the different strategies that each country are coming up with and all of that. Then once you understand that, study the gap. Government cannot do anything. There's constraint. Government had budget constraint. They can't do everything. Even if, if the money is there, uh, saboteurs in the system. 
If you give the $1 million to implement AFCFCA to run sensitization nationwide, there are those that would not do it. They will spend half of that money and they will pocket the rest. Okay, in a country like Nigeria, we are over 200 million. <laughs> we compete for opportunities here. You don't wait because well, basically you don't trust anybody. You are not waiting for anybody. You understand? So observe the gap. I find a major gap. Digital uh, leveraging on social media. Go to my government uh, implementation uh, committees of my country. They don't have engagement. I am just a private person. My, my profile as a single person is much more than, you understand? So you can actually leverage on that to bring your target market together and then you start engaging them. Those that want more, you run trainings for them. And those that have products, you bring them into uh, provide support, bring them into a marketplace. And those that want more, get them engaged in, uh, in um, uh, trade delegation and um, exhibitions and all of that that's going on across Africa. Wow. Um, I think this was uh, some of the conversations that I um, will never finish in one sitting. And I think one hour is not really enough for this. And um, I think I love the key takeaways, you know, learn about it and find your niche, get a mentorship and run with it. And I think those are my key takeaways from this entire conversation. And also the fact that we need to um, really build the capacity of the different institutions and create strategies and initiatives that allow for the workforce to be able to understand what the after is. And I think that in itself creates a new workforce um, within us. Absolutely. So thank you very much, Evans. And um, I'm saying we don't have a question yet or comment. And I think that's because you've been very uh, expressive and you've been very deliberate in your explanation of this process. And I think for me, I have taken a lot to the table just to be able to understand further and just learn more about the different parts of the after and just see where my niche maybe will lie. So um, from our end as Liberty Sparks, I think this has been a very insightful conversation. We want to thank you very much, Evans, for your time and for um, your expertise during this session. I also want to thank um, the, our participants who've taken the time, and I know it's very late in most countries, just to be able to um, be part of this conversation, listening in and also contributing. And um, I, I think uh, I just want to highlight this conversation does not stop here. We'll be able to upload this on our YouTube page on Liberty Sparks, just to be able to continue the conversation. And in case you want to share with your friends um, who are not able to join in today. So you'll find this will be uploaded in our YouTube. So keep up with our socials on Twitter, Instagram, and as well as Facebook and also YouTube as Liberty Sparks, just to be able to get more insightful conversations such as this one. And we've been running this webinar series since the beginning of the year. So we tackle different sectors, different conversations, um, and also highlighting different issues related to the Africa continental free trade area. So once again, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much, Evans, for your time. And please don't forget to follow us on socials. Um, Evans, feel free to also share on um, maybe the chat box how people can be able to reach out to you if in case it's email or any social media pages uh, in the true spirit of digital inclusion, <laughs> just to be able to further this conversation. All but right. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, I would prefer you can reach me through uh, Liberty Sparks, okay, uh, so that I'm able to engage okay. them properly. Like, for instance, if you're telling me, okay, uh, so once you recommend, otherwise I will charge them, I would, uh, you understand, so if they are coming <laughs> through you, <laughs> if they are coming through you, say, hey, Evans, please, these are our people, see how I would want you to help them and what to do for them, that's different. If they are not coming through you, be sure that I'll give them a bill. If it's not a free, whatever. So if they happen to fall yeah. into a free stuff, no problem. If it's not a free stuff, they are definitely going to pay. So let them come through. you. <laughs> I hear, here we are with a collaboration bit already starting. I mean, uh, I think it's a good avenue if uh, through Liberty Sparks, some of our uh, participants and members can be able to actually get free insightful conversations such as this. Uh, but yes, once again, thank you so much, Evans, and um, to every single person um, listening to us. Karibuni sana again. Um, keep up with the socials and good evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. See you guys in the next webinar series. Bye. Thank you.